Hey everybody, welcome to the show. I'm your host Sandman. Today we're going to be picking these Brinks 5-pin aluminum padlocks. Let's break into them. So these sell at Walmart for about $10 to $11. Uh, these are a 5-pin version. They're an upgrade to the cheaper brass version that you can buy for like 5 or 6 bucks. Or a package of 2 for 11 I think it is. Package of 4 for like 20 And these are honestly not much different. Just 4 pins. These are 5 pins. However, these have a spring-loaded core and a spring-loaded shackle. These are what's called a dead core. So there is no spring mechanism resisting against the plug. And there's no spring resisting against the shackle. That can help us and it can hurt us. Sometimes the spring tension that's forcing against the shackle can in turn, using Newton's third law of physics that every ap action has an equal and opposite reaction, sometimes it can force uh, unwanted pressure, especially if it has ball bearings or something like that, on the plug itself and it'll cause resistance against um, our picking. Um, it'll at least deaden some of the feedback. In these particular locks, it doesn't do that. However, sometimes dead cores can feel a little bit tricky. Um, uh, the feedback is not the same as a core that does have a spring-loaded tension behind it. So that's at least my opinions on it. I don't remember if these are guttable or not, but they kind of look like they may have like a key and knob or an interchangeable core in here, like an adapter on top or just a full stack interchangeable core. But I don't remember if these are guttable or not. We'll find out. So before we start picking these, Let's talk about this one here. So it's just a four pin uh, lock. We can use a 40 thou double ended turning tool. I'm gonna use top of keyway with the shorter end of my top of keyway there. And I'm just gonna use a short hook. In this instance, I'm just gonna go with the Jimmy Long's 15 thou short flat hook. And I'm going to inspect for pins that are binding. So the first binding pin is actually pin number four. I'm gonna lift it. Then I'm gonna work my way around from there. So we can actually go like to just pin number one. Got it, pin number two. There we go, and we have an open. Not all of these are that easy. Some of these uh, require you to pick all four pins. I only had to pick three pins on this one. Some of these will pick four, three, two, one. Some of these will pick one, two, three, four. Some of these are random, but you don't have to play whack-a-mole with them. With these, sometimes you do. Sometimes you do with these. So uh, for instance, uh, let's go ahead and uh, give this one a try and let's see what type of feedback this gives us. So I, I, I prefer to speed pick, which is where I'm looking for the binding pin first. So I'm on like pin five or pin four. Boom. And I got to click out of that. Let's go to pin one, nothing on one. Pin three is binding. Click, lift it up. It's not going anywhere. It may be a, a zero lift pin. Pin two was binding. So let's go for feel. I'm on pin one now. Boom. And I got an open. All right. Let's go for that purple one. So we're looking for the binding pin first. All right, and I feel it in the back here. Boom, pin five. I feel the next one's pin four. Boom, pin four is set. Pin three. Pin three is set. Pin two. Pin two is set. And nothing on one. Let's look for up oh, pin two. And I got that. I don't think for some reason, for some reason, new locks just need to be broken in a little bit. I don't think they come with factory grease at this price point. Uh, but let's give this a try. And if we have to add some grease, we will. Go ahead and drop the key in there, so that way, yep. All right, let's give this a try. So I'm just using a 40 thou. Okay. Okay, the binding pin is pin number four or three. Okay, got it. Let's go feel for number one, nothing, nothing on, wait, two. Yep, got, got click out of two. Feel number pin five. is. Maybe mine? No. Four? Yep. Four was the culprit. That's it. Sometimes you just got to work these pins in a little bit, like it's been used once or twice before you start picking. All right. Let's look for that binding pin and that's in the back. You I mean, you could just feel it. You just insert it and the first thing that your pick stops on is going to be the binding pin. And it's probably going to be close to the back. 
Okay, pin five, nothing on four, nothing on three, got to click out of two, back on three, click out of three, back on two, click out of two, back on one, and we are on one, I feel it. If I, pick, if I lift pin one, I feel like I'm going to get this. No, am I a liar? It could be the bidding. I may have to go with a gym hook. Yeah. So now I'm going to switch to a gym hook. I feel like I have a little bit more high-low bidding here. And I do. Take a look at that key. If this is the correct key. A little bit high-low bidding there on pin number four is really high. Pin four and pin three are much deeper. So let's give this a try here. Yeah, that was pin number one was really high. I'm. There we go. We got an open. So... I had to problem solve out, out of that one. I went with a, uh, I went with the Jimmy Long's gym hook. Now I know these are not available right now, but any type of deep hook is going to do that. So if you're buying the set of his flat hooks or round hooks, you're probably going to have a deep, a deeper hook in there, a medium or a deep hook. So that's the way to get around that is the high low bidding there. And I was surprised to find that. I think that's the key. No, that's not the key. This is the key. It's not too drastic, but it definitely helped to get that in there. That pin number one was was very shallow, so having that uh, gym hook will save the day. All right. Whoa. Easy. I don't know if I stated, the reason why I have so many of these is I'm going to be taking them to lock sport meetup groups. I think these are really great beginner locks. Make sure all those pins are dropped. Let's go back to that flat hook again. Okay, pin five is binding. Pin four, nothing. Pin three, pin two, binding. Pin two, there we go. I was like, what, what are you doing, pin two? Pin two, what are you doing? <laughs> pin, I'm back on pin five or four. Let's go back to one. Pin three, pin four. Huh, playing some whack-a-mole here. Pin five again. Something's not setting. Pin five, pin four. Yeah, I'm playing whack-a-mole with this one. Oh, that's, that's, so these are a little bit harder than those. I still think they're a yellow belt lock. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to switch to that deeper hook here and see if that's messing with us. We're going to start with pin one this time. This is a 19 thousandths, so it's a slightly tighter keyway uh, for this pick. It's such a t tight keyway that I'm going to chunk that and I'm going to grab my Jimmy Longs here. It's a little bit deeper, the one that's in 15 thou. Huh. I should be describing what I'm doing here, but I'm already frustrated, but I got an open. There's the open right there. So let's talk about that for a second. Sometimes I forget to talk because I'm frustrated and I don't mean to. I apologize. Let's talk about our problem solving here. So let's try pin one. Nothing on one, nothing on two, nothing on three. So, so far, almost all these locks, they want to bind on the last pins first. And that's typical. Um, I find that very common along the cheaper locks. That's because the tolerances are looser, and in my opinion, when you're applied, providing top of keyway tension, I think it closes the tolerance in the front and opens up that tolerance in the back, a little bit of like a seesaw motion. Someone once said, wow, that must be a really sloppy lock. Yeah, they are. They are very sloppy locks. Um, it's minute. It's probably between 10 to 15 thousandths of an inch, but it's there. 10 to 15 thousandths of an inch of slop is pretty big because this is a 15 thousandths pick. The slop in this lock is probably about the same thickness of my pick. So, and I'm quoting Mark Weber Tobias there for those tolerances. Um, Mark 
Tobias. I apologize. Yeah, Mark Webb Tobias. So anyways, pin five was the first binding pin. That doesn't necessarily mean that that's the first pin to open this lock, but that was the first one that I felt. Let's go back to one again. Let's go back to two. Pin three now. Good. Oh, crap. And we got an open. It was just five and <laughs> three on that one. So it could be that I may have touched some pins and lifted them. I'm guessing there may be some zero lift pins in here. I don't know. But that was the problem solving aspect of it. Let's go with this one. Wow. Look at this one. Look at the bidding on that one. That really super deep one pin there. That may cause some issues. Let's let's hope it doesn't. Let's give this a try. I don't know if my phone refocused or not. Okay. Well, I can tell you right now, my short hook's not going to work very well. But let's work through that. Let's pretend like we didn't know. You know, like that's it's important. It's important not to read our keys and to figure everything out immediately. So let's give that a try. So. Ideally, maybe I don't want to pick that first one. I'm trying to pretend like I don't know that that's going to F me up. So let's just feel for the binding pins in the back like we normally do. Okay, that was pin four, pin three, pin two, nothing on one, pin three or pin four. Feels like it's set. And nothing else is moving. So what do we do? We now realize, up oh, we have a bidding issue, an issue of bidding, a bidding war. So now we're going to go with our deeper hook. Pin one is set. Pin three is set. Pin four is set. Pin five is set. Back to two. There we go. Oh, wow. This. Huh, look at that. It feels like it's spring-loaded, but it's the tolerances of the lock body itself. Crazy. Wow. It's acting like it's stuck. I didn't feel that when I had the key in there. Huh. Yeah, there's no resistance with the key. You know what that means? That means I overset one of the pins so high that it went above the shear line, the key pin. And it was providing drag resistance. So that means these can be combed. Huh. I wonder. Let's see if these can be combed. I don't know. Let's see if I can match this up to a key. Yeah, that may work. So this is from Covert Instruments. This is the five pin comb. It says it works for Master 150, 160, Avis 5550, and the Avis 5560. So let's give this guy a try. Slightly paracentric, so I'm having trouble already. No luck right now, but it doesn't mean that it can't be combed. I got, I almost have it up in there. I think these can be combed. I just don't think I have the right comb. I don't think these are the right height. No, I don't think these are the right height. I think these would need to be a little bit taller, but I think this could be combed. At the very least, I know I can overset it in such a fashion. Well, let's move on, move along. So we're learning here. We're learning a few things. One thing we're learning is a short hook's not going to work on all these. We do have some uh, bidding that can be a little bit atrocious. And we are going to have to use deeper hooks. And we also just saw that we can overset a pin to cause resistance, uh, like a comb attack. And it, it will give us un it'll give us unusual feedback. It'll feel like maybe the core is not picked. And I'll keep, you know, I feel more, I still feel resistance, even though all the pins have been met to shear line. 
So we're going to keep with the, the function of using our short hook until we need it, until we need to go with a deeper hook. So let's feel for that binding pin. Okay, pin four, pin three. That was pin one. Boom. All right. Last two. You know what? I'm just going to pick one more because I forgot to take a picture of these locks. <laughs> for the uh, video and uh, I don't need to do another watch this will be the one I can't get into <laughs> so I'll pick one more though and then I'm going to take a picture of this one for YouTube and then I'll open it later off camera Oop. okay keep it in with our routine here we got our Flat hook, short, flat hook. Feeling for a binding pin. Okay, I think it's about pin four, pin five. Okay, five, four, nothing. Let's go back to one. Got a click out of one. A little click out of three or two. I think there's some minimal uh, zero lift pins in these locks. Got another click out of five. Yep, oh, and we got an open. Yeah, there's zero lift pins in these. Zero lift are basically where you don't have to lift them at all, but if you do touch them, you can overset them. But zero lift pins, in my opinion, are not going to be super effective on cheaper locks with the looser tolerances. They're really great on the high security locks where the tolerances are much tighter and the manufacturing process is better. So that's it, folks. I think that's enough. I don't need to beat a dead horse, as they say. It's 2024. Don't be mad. I'm going to be uh, taking a picture of this for the uh, thumbnail. And then I'll open this off camera. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you think this is a fun lock to pick? Do you have trouble with it? Do you think they're too easy? I think they're appropriate for beginners. I think they're appropriate yellow belt level lock. They're just a five pin tumbler lock. I would be surprised if someone ranked them as orange. There's a lot more difficult locks on the orange belt ranking you know, area that have security pins. Um, you know, these don't have security pins. I think these should be considered yellow, even though these are yellow. I also feel that these should be considered white belt. These four pin brinks are no different from master lock uh, uh, padlocks, and those are just four pins. So I think these should be white belt, and I think these should be yellow belt. These require a little bit of problem solving. There's no problem solving in this. But I don't rank these. I just pick them, and I collect them, and that is what it is. I think these are going to be great for competitions and lock sport meetups i think it'd be great to run through these as a part of a competition so thank you all so much for watching watching let me know in the comments down below if you like these locks if you plan on buying them also help me get to 5,000 subscribers i'm going to be doing some giveaways and uh get some pick sets into the hands of all of you help me get the 5,000. i'd really appreciate it, it really help me out um, i do monetize my channels so that way i can afford to bring these videos to you i i do spend a lot of money uh, purchasing product just for review and I am being selfish they do go in my collection but I do want to review them for all of you and I want to be able to buy locks to teach you how to pick so um, thank you all so much for watching hit that like button hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys next time